My discussion today is how Thompson gyroscopes interact with the quantum field. And if you study basic physics in a freshman physics test when they talk about Thompson gyroscopes, they won't mention this at all because they ignore it. But to go through the simple math, and hopefully it's not too much for those that aren't mathematically inclined, you have a gyroscope here, which I have a cylinder on a shaft, and when it's at an angle, it's being accelerated downward by gravity through the center of the mass, and there's an angle that it's at, so you get a term for the torque on it that's due to gravity, with gravity pulling it downward. It's T equals MGR sine theta, where M is the mass, R is the radius, it's the height of the top to the center of the mass, and then G is the acceleration due to gravity. So this is how it starts. Gravity is what causes everything else to happen. And if we look at the precession, we have a gyroscope that precesses around a center point where its shaft is pointing. And we have an angular velocity, which I list as omega p, the angular velocity of precession, and you have the angular momentum of the gyroscope as it moves. So you have another torque term, which is omega p cross L. And this is a vector cross product, which is interesting, as I'll show you that you have a force directed in one direction, and the output goes in another direction, 90 degrees to it. And so the gravity causes a torque, and this torque causes the precession, and then precession causes an upward torque. And so that's what we're taught in school, that all these torques just cause the top to precess, and then cause it to be lifted upward in opposition to gravity. And to be very clear, this is not anti-gravity. You don't get more force in than you, or out, than you get in. So you never get more lift than you have gravity pulling downward. And you always have slightly less lift than you have gravity pulling downward because of friction. So, the main problem with this is that physicists have the top or gyroscope pulling itself up by its own bootstraps. It's not pushing against anything, nothing's pushing against it. It's just able to pull itself up from its own bootstraps because of this torque, which doesn't make any sense. If an object is moving, it's moving because it's being pushed by something. So if you have an acceleration, you have something accelerating. And tops and gyroscopes behave the same way in a vacuum as they do in air. So it's not the air. And the only thing in the vacuum are quantum fluctuations. So it has to be quantum fluctuations. So uh, based on that, I want to show a short video of a gyroscope on, on a stalk and talk about what's happening. And here is a gyroscope, which I purchased from gyroscopes.com. And it's rotating and it's starting to process as it slows down. And the thing that's interesting, it's rotating if you look down it's rotating clockwise. And that means that you have, if you assume a magnetic pole, it would be pointing downward along the shaft. And 
what happens is we have a magnetic field that's generating around it that's counter-rotating that's pointing upward. And what this causes is as the gyroscope falls against the upward field, it gets deflected by the field in the direction the field is rotating. And that's the way that Maxwell described it, but using a vortex theory. But he didn't realize that space is filled with quantum dipoles that rotate. And then there's an easy way to remember how it goes. There's a right hand rule where you can have a finger point along the shaft downward, a second finger point where the force is pointing, and then your thumb points in the direction that it's going to precess. And then if you have the acceleration and direction of precess, then your thumb points in the direction that it's accelerating upward. So that's what happens. Um, we have a gyroscope that's producing an electrically neutral magnetic field. And then as it falls against that field, it's diverted at a right angle. And then diverting at that right angle, being accelerated that way, causes it to be deflected upward. So it doesn't fall immediately. And as you can see now, it's starting to get to the point where the shaft is almost perpendicular with the surface. And it'll actually go a little bit below perpendicular. So this is a, um, an excellent demonstration of gyroscopic behavior. And then I'll reach in and grab it before it falls. So that gives a picture of, of what's really happening. There's an interaction that is exactly like an electromagnetic interaction, but it's electrically neutral. And to understand that a little more, I'll talk about inertia. Electrically neutral bodies can't travel faster than the speed of light. And the speed of light is a function of the electrical permittivity and permeability of the quantum field. So that tells us an electrically neutral body moving through space is interacting with the quantum field electromagnetically. And since the permittivity and permeability of space, the electric and magnetic constants, arise from the quantum field due to the torque of all these dipoles rotating against each other, we must be causing dipole rotation when the body moves. And the way this happened is not due to electric charge, as some have hypothesized, but due to matter. If we think about a hydrogen atom with an electron and proton, if the only force was there was Coulomb force, the electron would fall into the proton and they'd form a neutron, and that would be that. But there's a repulsion going on. There's some form of repulsion where matter is being repelled from matter. And that is what causes a neutral object to cause the dipoles to rotate and the rotating dipoles to keep the object to keep moving in that direction to cause inertia. It's a matter interaction. It's not electromagnetic in the tr sense of electric charge based. It's based on matter in any matter. And I'll go into that more in other videos. Uh, but basically, you can have electromagnetic torque. You can have magnetic moment crossed by the magnetic field will give you a torque. So if you have a solenoid, for example, that is being accelerated or falling across a magnetic field lines, then you get a torque that's generated. And you can get similar types of results. So you can use 
Um, a Lorentz force is another type of force like that where you have a vector cross product. And that's QV cross B, where Q is the electric charge, and then V is the velocity, and B is the magnetic field. Now, if we were talking about an inductor moving through a field, we would use Ampere's law, but when you're using talking about discrete charges, you want to talk about the Biot-Savar law. And B equals mu naught, the permittivity, divided by 4 pi, and then Q, the electric charge, divided by R squared, the distance, times V cross R, where R is just a unit vector, which gives you the angle sine theta. So, in this case with matter, instead of having electric charge, we have some form of matter charge. So that gives us this equation, matter charge over R squared, omega. We can just use the angular velocity when we're talking about the, the rotation instead of just velocity V. And so then we can put this in a different form it's easier to work with with matter where it's the magnetic field being generated is mu naught over 4 pi again and this is mu naught in matter units whatever we decide on and then that is times the angular momentum or instead we can put it in terms of the moment of inertia times omega the rotation so we can see how a magnetic field is developed from the rotating gyroscope or top. And then we can go back and plug that magnetic, magnetic field into the Lorentz force law and that gives us interactions. Say if we have the sun rotating in space and it creates this matter magnetic field and then a body moves across it, you have a lens force, Lorentz forces pointing inward. And that's where the missing matter problem comes from, because physicists don't know this. But it's an obvious extension of inertia and gyroscopic action that there must be an entire Maxwell force it's just like the electric force. In fact, it's part of the electric force because all bodies moving through an electric field have mass. They're made of matter. So we already include these terms. If you want to understand this part of it, you just strip out the electric terms and just use the matter or mass terms. And we can go back and plug in, instead of the magnetic moment, you can use the angular momentum in determining the torque. So we can come up with an entirely separate way of looking at it that gets rid of the pulling yourself up by the bootstrap problem with gyroscopes that magically torque on their own without pushing against anything. And instead, they're interacting with the quantum field. And this is part of a whole big Maxwell force that I call the matter force. And it explains things like the precession of the perihelion of Mercury problem, and Lenz Serine precession, and De Sitter precession, all kinds of tidal forces. So, a lot of things fall out of this. Now this isn't a new approach. Heaviside back in 1893 came up with the idea of gravito magnetism. And, but what he didn't realize is it's not gravity at all. It's part of the electromagnetic force. The acceleration is the same as acceleration to the electromagnetic force. It has nothing to do with gravity. And in fact, gravity emerges from the electric force, but I'll go in more detail on that in other videos. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about how tops and gyroscopes really move and interact with the quantum vacuum. And if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure your physicist friends know about it, because 
a lot of them haven't thought about this. And then I do have some books for sale. I talk about this in one chapter in my book, The Zero Point Universe, and then have discussions about it again in 100 Greatest Lies in Physics and also my particle theory book, Goodbye Quarksianity Theory. And I'm a retired independent researcher, so if you purchase one of my books, that helps me in my retirement. And you can learn something. So I appreciate that if you decide to buy one of my books. So thanks for watching.